Hey everyone, my name's Taylor. Welcome to my channel. I wanted to share with you a book haul today and I have quite a few to share with you. I think I counted 50 books in all if I counted correctly. I know that sounds like a lot. I definitely did not purchase all of them at the same time. But I am a new Christian and I felt really convicted about some of the books that I had been reading and what was on my bookshelves. So I did a whole purge and there were not many books left over. So I've been trying to rebuild my book collection with Christian books. And so I wanted to share with you what I have gotten thus far. I'm going to separate them by where I got them. Uh, there's just too many to kind of go into the summary. So I thought it'd be really fun to show you how I found them. Without further ado, I'm so excited to share with you what I got. Let's go. All right, so I'm starting with the biggest section first, and I went to Mr. K's, and if you've never heard of them, they are a used bookstore, and they accept trade credits. You bring in books, and you get to trade them. They give you trade credits, so the majority of them I got for free, for free, but I got a lot. <laughs> the first one I got was Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. And I've really been wanting that. I've seen the movie and I really liked it. So I really wanted to read the book. And they had, an, I've never, I've usually seen her in red, but for some reason in this edition, she's in a silver dress. I don't know, but it's what's on the inside that counts, right? <laughs> so weird. I got Fault Lines by Vadi T. Bukum Jr. And if I say anything completely wrong, which I probably will, I really am not good at pronouncing people's names, so I'm sorry. I think this book was actually the most expensive out of all of them that I got from Mr. K's. It was $12.50. Then I got another Francine Rivers book. So like one of the staple authors that I had to get was Francine Rivers, and I think I have three. So far. This is in the Shofar Blue. I got a Jamie Jo Wright book on the cliffs of Fox Glove Manor. Can't talk. I got a Lynn Austin book, Where We Belong. And another Lynn Austin book, Waves of Mercy. And I just finished reading this one while I was at the beach last week. Wow, it feels like forever ago, but <laughs> I had to read a beach book at the beach. And I really, really liked it. I rated it 4.5, so I liked it. And I got two of the If I Run series, the first one um, and the second one, If I Run and If I'm Found by Terry Blackstock. And I've been hearing such good things about this one, so I was really excited to find these two. They were $5 each. Didn't pay that, though. I got another Terry Blackstock book, Aftermath. I got Eve by W.M. Paul Young. It's the same author as The Shack, and I know that book has really polarizing feelings around it, so I wanted to start off with this one and see if I like the author's writing. I got a biblical fiction book, The Centurion's Wife by Davis Bunn and Janet Oak. I got another Janet Oak book, One Calls the Heart, and I know this is the um, Hallmark Channel movie edition. I have not seen it, but I don't know how close it is to the book. If anybody knows, let me know. Boo by Renee Gutteridge. Renee Gutteridge. Got it that time. A Girl's Guide to the Outback by Jessica Kate. I just love covers like that. Like they're all cartoony and cute. Aww. Another really pretty cover by um, Tep. Tessa Afshar, Daughter of Rome, Wooing Katie McCaffrey by Bethany Turner, and I have read this one, and I rated it four stars. In the Shadow of Croft Towers by Abigail Wilson, I rated it three stars. The last book I got from Mr. K's was Sweet on You. It's the third book in the Bradford Sisters romance. So I think out of all of that, I think I spent maybe five bucks on all of those, like out of my own cash money. So I think I did pretty good. I also got this book from Sam's Club and I just recently became a member of Sam's Club and they have some Christian books in there if you didn't know. 
and this one, His Needs, Her Needs, Making Romantic Love Last by Willard F. Harley Jr. It was $15, which I thought was pretty good for a, a brand new hardback. But this book I heard about through a podcast that I really enjoy, which is the Journey Women, Co the Journey Women podcast with Hunter Beadless. And one of her hosts that was the topic that they were talking about was marriage and they really recommended this book. So I saw it and I was really excited. So I had to grab that. I got another book from a uh, used bookstore at the beach. I forget what it was called, but it was in Calabash, North Carolina. And it was just a cute little bookstore. It was really small. And I think they basically go off of uh, donations. So they have like newer books or $5 and then the rest were like three, um, give or take for fiction anyway. And I found this one on the $5 section. So The Beautiful Pretender, A Medieval Fairy Tale by Melanie Dickerson. And I have read a few Melanie, Melanie Dickerson books before I was a Christian. And so I'm excited to read her again. I know I remember I enjoyed them, but I'm excited to read them as a Christian now. So, and I love um, fairy tales. Excuse me, thank you. Thank you. Ew, he slobbered on it. So I also ordered some books from, a few books from Amazon. This is Shadow and Light by T Tish Oxenrider. Um, it's about, it's an Advent book. So if you didn't know, Advent is the season, the season I cannot talk today. <laughs> Advent is the season leading up to Christmas. Around that time, I was really trying to learn how to read the Bible and was really curious about things. So I got this book to kind of help me prepare my heart and mind for Christmas. And it was really helpful to do that. It has, like it explains what Advent is and then it um, goes through the different weeks. And it has like, you light the candle. I didn't light the candle at the time, but it has like a paragraph and then um, a section of scripture for you to read. It asks you a question and then it also has um, a song that you can listen to and a, uh, a piece of artwork you can look at that kind of goes along with the theme for that day. And I really just focused on the paragraph and scripture, but I'm not really much of a, an art person and then it was usually when I read this it was late at night and I didn't want to listen to music right before I went to sleep but other than that it was really helpful as a newbie Christian all right I've got a living the Christian year time to inhabit the story of God by Bobby Gross this is a guide to the liturgical year and it is how to live your year biblically so instead of like following the calendar year it follows like advent christmas um easter you know like goes through like the biblical celebration to get your heart in the right place for that time of year and i'm really a very seasonal person so when i heard about this book i was really excited to pick it up i have not read it yet so maybe next year next advent i'll be able to because it's like right now we're like over halfway through so I'll just hopefully I'll read it this year in Advent. <laughs> I got another book that I heard about through the Journey Women podcast and this is Women of the Word How to Study the Bible with Both Our Hearts and Our Minds by Jen Wilkin and as a newbie Christian I really need to learn how to read the Bible correctly because for example I thought the Bible was chronological from front to cover, front to back cover, cover to cover, and that is not the case. And so um, I just need all the pointers I can get to help me digest the material better. So I hopefully, I have not gotten to this one yet, but I hopefully will soon. It's really, it's really tiny. So I got a book at the Hobby Lobby clearance section, which never happens to me. I can't find anything in the clearance section most of the time, but I had a good day that day because I found this and a couple other things as well. But I was really excited to find this one because I'd heard about The Purpose Driven Life, What Am I Here, What on Earth Am I Here For, the expanded edition. And it was 
479 by Rick Warren. I uh, participated in a women's Bible study and we did this one, um, Elijah, Faith and Fire by Priscilla, Priscilla Shire. Y'all, I cannot talk. It is a seven session Bible study. It's about Elijah, if you didn't know, he asked God to rain down fire from the sky and he's really, really bold in his faith. And it's um, kind of walking you through how you can be bold in your faith. How did this man get from, how did he get to that point? So it kind of really helps you with that. And I'll show you real quick. It has a introductory page per week. And so it has a fill in the blank sheet. There's um, a video that goes along with it. Priscilla Starr walks you through like kind of like a mini sermon kind of thing and you fill in the blanks as you go. And then, you know, just like any other workbook kind of thing. I really, really enjoyed that. I did a ton of notes, but um, I got that through my church. A couple other things from my local Bible store. The one I went to was really awesome. They had uh, tons of stuff on sale, surprisingly. You wouldn't think um, like a small business would, but they had tons of stuff on sale. They were really nice and it felt really good to give my money to a small business owner that instead of a big company. I also got another Priscilla Schreier Bible study book, another seven edition one. This one is discerning the voice of God. I had been praying for God to show me how to listen to him and not mistake it for myself. And lo and behold, I found this book. I got this big old book from um, the book, the Bible books, the Bible store, it's not just a bookstore, it's a Bible store. The Evidence That Demands Verdict, Life Changing Truth for a Skeptical World by Josh McDowell and Sean McDowell. And it won the Christian Book Award, actually. I love apologetics. I think it's really cool how we can prove that Jesus walked this earth and other aspects of the Bible as well. I am not much of a nonfiction reader, so this does intimidate me a little bit how big it is, but this is something that I really am passionate about and really curious about, so I, I, I do want to read this eventually. Next, we'll get into my thrift store finds, and I think these are the most fun. I love thrift store shopping in general anyway. It's kind of like scavenger hunting, but I especially love looking for books because they are so much cheaper than buying them brand new and I, again it feels like a little treasure hunt or scavenger hunt or something because you see something that somebody recommended or that you see you've seen on YouTube or booktube and you find it and you're like oh my goodness so a lot of these I had a little moment in the thrift store all right so the first one I saw the in cover and I was like oh my goodness it looks like those Bible studies that I've already looked into I've already done and Yay, it was. It was. It's by the same company, Lifeway. It is Better, A Study of Hebrews by Jen Wilkin. And that was the same author as this book. So I, um, it was basically brand new. Like there's hardly, I think there's like one page. Yeah, one page with, I don't even know if I showed you anything. It's got a little bit of pencil writing. And I actually found another copy at a different, at another um, thrift store for 25 cents. So I got that for my friend, and we're gonna we're gonna do this one together. I got this book for 25 cents. It doesn't have the cover, but I don't care because it was 25 cents. How could you not? It's called Present Over Perfect by Shauna Nequist, and I've seen someone recommend this one. I don't remember what it's about, but I recognized it, so I bought it. Gentle and Lowly, The Heart of Christ for Sinners and Sufferers by Dane Ortland. I think I can't her, her name, Books and Jams, I think is her channel name. She's doing a read-along this month in June for this book, and I had been wanting to read that because it was in her video, like she's doing the read-along, and then I think Oshina had picked this up like someone gave it to her or something. Um, so I wanted to pick this up and then like the next day I went to the thrift store and it was like lying on the sh on the big old pile of books. Like there was a massive pile of books that were not organized whatsoever and I really wanted to fix it, but that's not my job. But it was sitting on top and I was like, <gasps> yay! 
it was 25 cents and I was looking for it and it was a good day. I got the case for Christ and the case for faith and then I didn't even know there was a study guide by Lee Strobel. So I went ahead and bought that because I think it was 25 cents. I don't remember. It was really cheap. And then these ones I think I got for like $1.25 from Miracle Hill. These two. I think this one I got um, at the same store as these ones. So all of these are 25 cents each. Yay. At, um, it was a it was a, a, a private thrift store so it wasn't like a main chain one but love that. I got Ben Hur from by Lou Wallace and I only know about this book because of the Charlton Charlton Heston's Ben Hur which is a really good movie classic back in made back in the day it's really good though so I didn't even know it was a book until I think I heard about it on booktube somehow but anyways it's an interesting copy I think it has like yeah it has little illustrations I found it for a dollar twenty-five at uh, what's it called? Home with a heart, I think. Is what it, there's uh, several thrift store chains in in my area at least. Also found Piercing the Darkness by Frankie Peretti, a um, dollar twenty-five at the Home with a Heart as well. I think that's what it's called. This one as well at that same store, Risen by Angela Hunt. 75 cents for this one. I watched the movie for the first time this year um, during Easter and I really liked it. So I want to see the book that inspired it. Here's my third Francine Rivers book, um, The Atonement Child. And I got this one at another private thrift store. I think it was like a dollar. And then I got these three books for 25 cents each at Another Home with a Heart. I'm having a Merry Heart in a Martha World by Joanna Weaver. Uh, hello. <laughs> I think my church had done a study or something with this book. One of my fellow church goers told me about it, so I wanted to pick it up. The Power of a Praying Woman by Stormy Omartian. And then The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. How could you not? 25 cents. I've never seen this edition before. Oh, I think it's the movie edition. It's got movie pictures in it. But I really wanted the like classic one, but it was 25 cents. Now I'm getting into the last few books and all of these were full free. I found this Colleen Coble book, A Heart's Home, book six, but it was free. It was in a little library at the beach and I couldn't find, I went to five or six little libraries and there was nothing except for, there was one other um, kids book that I grabbed, but this was the other like adult book. This was the the other book I found that was Christian fiction. I don't even care that it's book six. I'll get the other ones maybe, but it was free. All right, so I also went to um, a marriage retreat that was hosted by my husband's military unit. It was Christian based, so there were several free books that I got to get. The marriage retreat was based on this book, Laugh Your Way to a Bear Better Marriage by Mark Gunger. He is a pastor out in Wisconsin. Yes. And I have read the book. The marriage retreat was based on a video presentation he did. And I think he might have written the book after one of the two, but either before or after. But it is really similar to the presentation. So if you can't do the presentation, you can buy it on his website, I think. Or if your military unit does something similar, you can ask about it. But I prefer the presentation because he is hilarious. His present, his presentation of things is hilarious. His voices and sounds and things he does is it's like watching a comedy show. But I could hear his voice whenever I was reading this book, um, and it was a little bit more in depth than the than the presentation. So it's still really really good if you um, are interested. I think I rated it like four stars. 
And then I also got Sex and the Supremacy, Supremacy of Christ by John Piper and Justin Taylor. Created for Connection, The Hold Me Tight Guide for Christian Couples, Seven Conversations for a Lifetime of Love by Dr. Sue Johnson with Kenneth Sanderfer. So it was free. All right. I have three books that I got from one of the most unlikeliest of places that I would have thought to get a book, and that was my gym. <laughs> I am definitely not a workout person, but I do enjoy that gym, and they get extra brownie points in my book because they have a bookshelf with free Christian books, so I was super excited. I got The Passion of Jesus Christ by John Piper, that same author actually. Uh, the Complete Book of Who's Who in the Bible, by Philip Crawford and Walter A. Elwell. Y'all, the whole like back and forth thing, I need, I need me a cheat sheet. And then I was super excited to find this one on the free gym bookshelf, book, free giveaway book. I was excited to find it. A Bookshop by the Sea by Denise Hunter. I'm currently reading it now. I haven't gotten very far, but it's summer and I want to read sea summary books. So I had been wanting to grab this one and it happened again. It was free on the shelf. I was like, yes. The last three I got through giveaways. I got all three within the same week of each other. So it was a good week. Like I never went anything, much less three things the same week, <laughs> much less books. So I was really excited. First one was to Steal a Heart, the Blecker Street Inquiry Agency by Jen Toronto. And it's autographed. Let me show you. Yay! To Steal a Heart, All the Best by Jen. And I got a little bookmark as well. And then the last two for this book haul I got from Melanie Kelsey for 6th Anniversary Booktube Giveaway. And I won two from her. Like I said, never happens to me. I was so excited. The first one is The Secret of Pembroke Park by Julie Classen. And then the second one is Dauntless by Dinah L. Sliman. I'm really excited to read these two because these are two of her favorites. I got them in a giveaway, so I'm going to read these at some point. But... I'm really excited. I'm, I'm excited about all these books. I know I've said that like 15 bajillion times, but I love books and I hope you enjoyed that. All my ramblings about where I found books, but thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.